it's his breath it's his it's his breath in our lungs so we pour out that praise did you recognize that this morning when you woke up that's God right there that's his grace that's his love he did not have to give it to you today it's his breath so as we worship we are just giving that breath back to sending it back to where it belongs the throne of God amen when we pray with pray, pray together Lord oh, we're so grateful for that breath Lord we did not have to wake up this morning so many people around the world did not and yet, Lord, you saw it fit that today, today, this day, we would have a heartbeat again. We would have breath to, to walk around and sing about your love. You saw it fit, Lord, and you have given us this breath, this new gift today, Lord. And for that, we give you honor and glory. Lord, just a moment ago, I was in a class where I was reminded that we often don't see the ordinary ways that God provides we don't recognize that the heartbeat we have in our chest right now is all thanks to God who is allowing us to live. We often don't realize, Lord, that the fact that we have a building again today, we have a building again today, it's because of you. You're providing constantly. So, Lord, our breath, we just give back to you right now. This breath is for you. Our thoughts are for you. Our heartbeat is for you take it as an offering we commit right here right now to live to honor and glorify your name thank you jesus for the space thank you lord for what you have already been doing through the different classes the different interactions thank you god because you have moved uh through our leaders uh through prayers through through songs and now god we will continue to worship you through your word this word is already blessed and anointed. We just ask, God, that it may land on fertile ground in our hearts. That as we receive it, God, as we learn together, that Jesus Christ may get bigger in our hearts, bigger in our minds, and that we may leave this place not loving, but completely obsessed with Jesus Christ, ready to live for him. Lord, We ask that according to the riches of your glory, you may grant us to be strengthened with power through your spirit in our inner being. And all those who agreed said, amen, amen. Turn to the person next to you. Give them a high five. Say happy Sabbath. You look good today. It's good to have you here at church. And as you're doing that, if you can just squeeze in. We, got, we, we, we are kind of maxed out in space. If you can squeeze in, make some room. Before you sit down, if you can just make some room by squeezing in and leaving the seats at the edge available for other guests who will be joining us today. Hallelujah. 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 How many of us are blessed this morning? We woke up. Amen. Yeah, we may, we may not have our gas tank full. We may not have much in our bank account. We may have a cold today, but by the grace of God, we are alive. We have a heartbeat, and we get a chance to come together as a community and worship the one who has made it all possible. Once again, if you can just squeeze in, if there's any seats in between you and your friend, um, it's okay. It's a Sabbath. You can just get a little closer, and, and we can make room for people who may be on their way. Uh, we are a church that believes that the Bible is the Word of God. Amen? We believe in studying the Bible together. This is not just about the pastor coming up here and sharing his or her thoughts. This is about studying what God has to tell us for this day. And we have been praying for this series for some time. I have been uh, wrestling with some of these ideas, some of these concepts. But none of that matters if you don't, if you don't look into the Bible yourself. So one of the things that we were doing this year at Kaleo is we are, we're facilitating that for you. We're giving the opportunity to, to open up an actual physical Bible if you don't have one in your hands. So if you don't own a Bible or if you just forgot a Bible today and you would like to follow along, can you just raise your hand right there? I got this handsome man right here called Israel, and I got Danny on this side, two of our 
amazing deacons. You just hold up your hand. They're going to get a Bible to you right now. Make sure that you're following along. And for those of you who already have your Bible, if you can start uh, by joining me in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, which is where our, uh, our study will be today. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 and on. I'm just going to give you a few moments. To get those Bibles. Now, by the way, if you got a Bible today and you don't own a Bible, that Bible is our gift f- uh, from Kaleo to you. You can take that. Please study it. Get into the Word. This is our gift to you as a community. We would love for you to study the Bible. One of the, my, my favorite things about being a father is experiencing the love of my children. There, there is nothing like it. I have received love from my parents. I have received love from my spouse. But there's something so beautiful and powerful that can only be experienced that comes from receiving love from your little ones. Over the past couple years, uh, my, my, um, my girls have been doing something that, that, that is a constant thing in our family. Now, now, I have a little confession. I am usually... Now, you may find this hard to believe because you look at this man and you're like, that man is disciplined. That man, you know, he he, he has everything. All his ducks are in a row. No, 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 that's not entirely true. I rely heavily, heavily on the grace of God. Amen. And my wife said, amen. (laughs) Um, I am usually the last one to wake up at home. I'm usually the one who sleeps in. As a matter of fact, this week, I was so exhausted. I ended up sleeping in quite a bit. I'm not going to reveal how late I got because then you may judge me and you may lose your Sabbath blessing if you do. But um, <laughs> I, I did have a hard time waking up one of these days. And, and um, uh, my, my, I had just hit a wall physically. I was just so exhausted. And all of a sudden, one of my, my girls did something that they've been doing. They've both been doing a lot over the last couple years. And it's sneak into the room, come close. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going I'm to cry. They, they come close. They caress my face. They hold my hand. They caress my face. Lean in. Give me a kiss on the cheek and walk out. Oh. And the thing is this, they're not trying to wake me up. They're not, they're not jumping on the bed trying to, no, 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 no. This is just, like, they, they see dad with, with bed hair and morning breath like this on the bed. And they still find it appropriate to come, lean in, caress my face, and give me a kiss. That's cute, huh? But I guarantee you, it it sounds cute on your end, but you have no idea the type of chills that are going up and down my, my spine right now. Because this type of experience cannot be explained away. It's something that you need to experience. You see, if you hear about it, you may be like, oh, that's so sweet. That is so cute. But it's not until you're on the receiving end of a gesture like this that you realize what just happened is monumental and it cannot be explained away. It can only be experienced. Such it is with the love of God. Today we're going to talk about the love of God. I know, right? Okay, Manny, come on, give us prophecy today. Or give us something deeper. Come on, the love of God. Come on, Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me. Come on, we, we, we learned this early on. Now, what, what do you mean, Manny? You're going to talk about the love of God again. Let me tell you something. The love of God is a notion that is inexhaustible, and we will talk about it for all of eternity. And, and why, why, why don't we just start now? Because the moment you, met, you get a grasp and control of the love of God, let me tell you something, you become God. And that's never going to happen. The love of God is a science that will forever be studied and scrutinized. It's a science that we will forever be invested in learning about. The love of God we cannot stop talking about. And I want to stand here and submit to you today that there is no subject deeper in scriptures than the love of God. 
But at the same time, the love of God cannot be explained away. It's like that touch from a little girl to a father who can only quite be comprehended when it's experienced. Are you ready to experience that today? Don't take my word for it, church. Let's walk out of this place having been kissed by God himself. Amen? Are you ready for this? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3 for a moment. Ephesians chapter 3 is, is the, the foundation of our series this year. This year, uh, uh, our, our entire year is going to revolve around this idea of going deeper with God. We have, we have been, many of us have been in church for years and years and years, and we haven't gained much depth with him. This is a year when we go deeper. And if this is your first time here, or you're just getting your feet wet with Jesus, this is the perfect year to come join us, because this is when we're going to systematically, as a church, walk into deeper waters and learn more about the love of God for our lives, and have that love transform us and change us. Ephesians chapter 2, the, the, the chapter right before the, the, our our study for today is a chapter where we are told that we are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. How many of us are grateful for that? We're not saved by our works. We're not saved by our efforts. I'm not saved by my behavior. I am saved by believing that God's grace is enough and it can give me life even though I was dead. That's what chapter 2 is about. And, and, and Paul is telling the church that you access this salvation by trusting in Jesus, by faithing as a verb, faithing Jesus, having your faith set on Jesus Christ, his merits and his love for you. Chapter 3, however, is, is when Paul says, okay, Kathleen, you are now saved. You are now just, uh, uh, justified. I'm going to move into your heart, and I'm going to work on you so that now your life may reflect more like the life of Jesus. This is when we, we begin a process that we know as sanctification. It's a process of transformation. We don't become spotless in a day. We walk with Jesus, and Jesus moves in into our lives, into our hearts. And as he moves in, he begins to change different things about us. He begins to move in and move some furniture that needs to be moved and clear some stuff that needs to be cleared out. He comes in and, and, and remodels the entire thing. So all of a sudden, the culture of our hearts looks just like the culture of heaven. And that's also done by faith. So last week we talked about allowing Jesus to move in, moving in with the purpose of cleaning up our hearts and, and having his way with us. We're going we're gonna to now take the second step in this journey and see what, uh, what, what Paul is telling the church. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and read chapter uh, 3, verses 14 and on. Watch what it says. For this reason, he says, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. That according to the riches, this is one of my favorite verses, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Hallelujah. So that Christ, we, we, we talked about this last week, may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love. Mm. Being rooted and grounded in love may have the strength to comprehend the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Let's read verse 20 nice and loud. Can we do that together? Verse 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Let's hear it. Amen. 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 That, is, that is one of the most, uh, and Karen and I were talking about this yesterday, this is slowly becoming our family prayer it's becoming becoming our family text it is so deep and if you just if you just commit to praying this thing over your life and over your family and over your community on a regular basis i guarantee you you will go deeper in jesus this has so much power and what you're praying for in this prayer can lead you to places that you never 
ever imagine. So I am thrilled to be preaching this uh, for the entire month of January. God has been doing a work in my heart, and I believe he can do it in yours as well. Rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded in love. Let's look at that word rooted for a moment because here Paul is praying that the church, and I believe that, that echoes through generations and it lands all the way in, in, in Monrovia in 2018 in this little church called Kaleo. That you may be rooted in the love of Christ. Paul introduces now an agricultural term. This is agricultural. This has to do, as Armita just presented, and I don't want to redone too much in what she said because it was so on point. I'm like, girl, you're going to preach my sermon today. That's so good. It was so good. Thank you for sharing that. This, this is an agricultural concept that he is saying, your life must be rooted in the love of Christ. What, 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 why could he introduce that idea what is the picture that he is trying to paint why roots why roots why roots he's going to talk about being grounded being grounded not that it, that has an architectural connotation that has to do with stability and your strength to endure we're going to get to that in a moment but why is he saying that you need to be rooted in the love of christ because the fruit is directly affected by the nutrients that come into the plant through the roots. You can't have good fruit if you don't have good roots. You can't have good fruit, I'm going to repeat that again, if you don't have good roots. So oftentimes we go around our lives and we see that we live prideful lives and we see that we live legalistic lives and we see that we live critical lives. You, if this is a description of you, which it has been of me so many seasons in my life, I can tr go and trace back. Certainly I was producing this type of fruit because I was, I was being rooted in the wrong things. The fruit that you produce is directly linked to where your roots are. Galatians chapter 5 gives us, as a matter of fact, gives us a list of what he calls, Paul calls the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of love, the fruit of joy, of peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are all fruits that come as a result of the believer in Jesus being rooted in his love. Let me, let, let me, let me say it this way. You cannot produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness by being rooted in religion. You cannot produce faithfulness and gentleness and self-control by being rooted in your tradition. And you cannot produce any of these things by being rooted in your career. Let me push it even more. You can't produce any of these by being rooted in the love you have for your spouse or for, that your spouse has for you. These types of, of, of fruits are a result of a person who has decided knowingly and objectively, I am planting myself and I am going to be nurtured by the love of God. And all of a sudden, the love of God begins to run through your veins and begins to run through your life. And in the most difficult of circumstances, you end up showing love. In the most, with the most unlovable of people, hello, you end up showing love. You end up having joy when you get that diagnosis. You end up having peace when you get fired. You end up having patience when that coworker. I see some testimonies on this side right here. You see, you end up being kind to the person who flips you off in the freeway. You end up being, being good to those who are being bad and evil to you. You end up being faithful even when it's hard to stay faithful. You see, these are not stuff, fruits that you can generate without the roots being right there, constantly nurtured by the love of Christ. 
So, so he says, okay, I want you, I'm praying, he's on his knees, I am praying that you may be rooted in love. But then he, he introduces another concept. He says, I want you to be grounded in love as well. Rooted, that is an agricultural concept. Grounded is an architectural concept. And what this implies is that you, he, he wants you to be established and stable. He wants you to be fortified at the foundation so that when winds and storms hit your life, your life may remain immovable. Now, now I know y'all came to church to get some good news today, right? How many of us are here for good news? You here for good news? Let me give you some bad ones real quick. This may be the year, listen to me carefully, this may be the year someone close to you gets that diagnosis. This may be the year you lose one of your loved ones. This may be the year, and I'm not wishing it upon anyone. Let's just be real today. This may be the year you get that pink slip. This may be the year you get betrayed. This may be the year. What is, what is your foundation? What are you doing to prepare for those great storms that hit our lives simply because we live on this planet called Earth and we are humans? What, what, what do you have? What is your plan? What is your game plan? So when, when you're confronted with the difficulties of life, what is it that your, 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 your escape plan, what is the thing that you're going to turn to in order to stay steady and not fall and not be blown away like chaff in the wind? What is that thing? Paul's already praying for you, saying, hey, I am praying that you may be grounded in the love of Christ. So that when, because it's only a matter of when, when the crazy winds come, when the storm comes, when the hurricanes come, when the earthquake comes, you may be immovable because you know God loves me above all this. To me, this was so tangible, church. Some years ago when my, my oldest cousin, my older cousin, Perla, she, she had kidney failure. She was going through very, very, very difficult season. And she was, at one point, she was at the hospital. We didn't know what was going to happen. Things did not look very well. She had two little young kids. I mean, the young mother, the prime of her life, and she was going through the deepest difficulty of her life. And I remember Karen and I moving, uh, you know, through, through the waiting room and seeing our family just completely devastated as she is inside in a hospital room. And we went inside to, to talk with her, visit with her, and pray for her. And all of a sudden, right there, as we were in the middle of this dark, not just moment, but dark room, she's there, she's devastated, so many questions and so much uncertainty. And we're trying to offer words of encouragement and prayers. When all of a sudden, she said the following. She said, Manny, I don't know about theology. I don't know much about eschatology and prophecy. And I don't know biblical studies. I don't know Greek. I don't know Hebrew. I don't know any of that. But there's one thing that I do know. God loves me. And I love him back. That is enough. My cousin was going through the most difficult storm of her life. But she was grounded in the love of God. The winds of illness and disease were not going to blow her away. And I want to just pray this over you today, uh, Kaleo. That you may leave this place today with the conviction, I am not moving anywhere in 2018. Storms may come, wind may come, may, may, may come, earthquakes may happen, but my foundation is set in the love of Jesus Christ. The enemy will not be able to move me from his presence this year because I'm in him. Paul's saying, I want, I'm praying that you may be Rooted and grounded in, in what? Love. Now, I, I was, 
I was thinking about that word love this, this, this week. Just trying to wrestle because it's one of those words that we, we, we use and overuse, right? Like we say, I love everything. Like we say, I love tacos, and then we say, I love Jesus. Like what, what does that mean? <laughs> Do you love tacos and Jesus the same? Like what? what, what? <laughs> We, we, we use the word love so, so just loosely. What, is it, what does it mean? So, so when, when Paul is saying, hey, I'm praying that you may be grounded and rooted in love, what is he talking? Is he talking about a feeling I have when, when, when I'm with my spouse? And is he talking about just oh, being in community and the warmth I feel when I'm here on Sabbath and just the energy of the room? Like what is it talking about here? What is this love that he is referring to? So, so as you look into the text and you do a little bit of homework with the original language, you realize, sure enough, he is talking about a love that in the Greek is known as the agape love of God. Agape is a love that is unconditional. It's a love that is, that is unwavering. It's a love that is constant. It's a love that doesn't change. It doesn't increase with your good behavior, and it doesn't decrease with your bad behavior. It's the kind of love that, that, that is unmerited, and yes, it's unilateral. It's the kind of love that is perfect. It's the kind of love that is spotless. It's the kind of love that it's the only type of love that could possibly save the human race from being apart from God. So, so Paul is being very intentional in this prayer. He's saying, I am praying that you may be rooted and grounded in agape. And let me tell you why I believe he's being intentional. Because Ephesians, the Ephesians were a Greek culture. It was a Greek culture. So in the Greek mentality, they understood that there are various types of love that humanity can experience. There is agape love, which is this perfect, unconditional, unwavering love. And then there is other types of love. And, and Paul is saying, I, I'm being very specific. I need you to be grounded and rooted in the agape of God. But, but, but this is, this is what, I, what I discovered this, this week. And maybe correct me if I'm wrong. Well, don't raise your hand and correct me if I'm wrong. We can talk about this later. But there's been seasons in my life where I have been rooted and grounded in other types of love. The Greeks present multiple faces for this word love, and one of them is the word eros. Have you heard of that before? Eros love. It's where we get words like erotic, eroticism. Ideas like lust come from this concept. So, so, so I'm like, okay, how, at what point, Manny, have you exercised or anchored your life in eros love with God? Because it, it, it almost has a sexual connotation. Are you, are you following with me? So how can a person possibly be rooted in eros with God? Work with me here for a moment. Eros love is known for one thing, desiring what you can offer me, lusting, right? You got something, and I want it. You, 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 you I like what you have to offer, and I unilaterally, I want you to give me what you got. Eros does not give it receives. It seeks to receive, and it seeks to benefit from the good things you got. So that is eroticism. That is the basis of what we now know as lust. So, so I started, I started uh, just kind of taking some time to reflect. Have I ever been rooted in eros with God? Absolutely. When I've come to church just to get a blessing. When, I've, when I worship because I want the results of God's blessing over my life. Or when I pray only when I need a miracle. When I, when I pray because God, I want God to give me that raise or get me that promotion. When I only seek God because of what God can give me. That is when I'm rooting myself in eros. 
It is the gospel according to Chaz the Rapper. When the praises go up, the, uh, the blessings come down. So, so, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and praise you because I, 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 want, I want the blessings too. So, so, so then you got gospels that tell you, hey, if you come and give your tithe, God is going to rain his blessings upon your life. So you give your tithe in order for you to receive the good things that God has for you. So it becomes a religion of desiring the good things that you can receive, but you never even worry about the being who was trying to lavish his life upon his love upon your life. It's all about the blessings. It's all about the goodness. It's all about the miracles. Do this for my life. This is my year. This is my time. Let's do this. You can do this for me. And all this time, God says, I'm just trying to have a relationship with you. So, so, so Paul is being very clear. You got to root yourself in agape, not in eros. Not in the love that seeks to get, but in a different kind of love. The Greeks also understood that there was a different kind of love. The, 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 the Greek name is phileo. It's, it's a brotherly, sisterly love. It's a love between two equals. It's a love between Sean and I. Sean and I are brothers. Sean and I are friends. And, and, and he enhances my life. And I enhance his life. And we are better because we're homies together. We're friends together, and, and we contribute to one another. We reciprocate the love and the blessings that we have for one another. I add value to his life, and he adds value to my life. Well, how could that be lived in a religious sense? Have you ever felt like you could help God save you? Have you ever felt like, yo, okay, God, I know you came on the cross and all. I know you went on Calvary. I know you conquered the grave, but let me give you some help. I'm a little too difficult for you. So I'm going to try to obey just so I can meet you. So I can't do it halfway, but at least I can eat some of the distance. That is phileo love. It is thinking that you have something to add to the glory of God. And guess what? You got nothing to add to his glory. So, so you have Paul, he is on his knees, and he is praying for his church. I am praying that you may be rooted, that you may be grounded, not in eros, not in phileo, but that you may be grounded and rooted in the unmerited, unparalleled, consistent, never, ever, ever wavering love of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that can find, that can provide for you stability and can cause in you the fruits that will cause you to reflect Jesus Christ. Is this good news or what, family? Is this, I mean, I, I know, I know we're talking Greek terms and everything, but let me tell you something. We are being confronted in this prayer with some of the most powerful news in Scripture. That such a love is available for God's people here on earth. Watch how the text continues. If you can show me up on the screen. That you may have strength to comprehend with all the saints. Let's say that together. That we may have strength to comprehend with all the saints. What is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth? He's saying, we, we, you, 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 I want you to experience and to understand and to grasp the love of God. But I don't want you to do this alone, Erica. You, you, you were not created to do this thing alone. As a matter of fact, I have designed the church, I have designed the community of Christ precisely so that the people of God can understand, can come and comprehend and experience the love of God in community. Let me, let me be very frank with you. And if you've never heard it put this way, I hope it resonates in your heart. Living in community is not an option for a true follower of Jesus Christ. There is no such a thing as a disciple in isolation. There is no such a thing as a disciple out and about and away from the community of Christ. When Jesus established the church, you see in the Old Testament, you have prophets who were alone. You have prophets, even John was alone. But the moment Jesus instituted the church and he breathed the Holy Spirit over this community, he designed it with the sole purpose of it to be moving together. 
So family, we, we don't, this is not church. This is a space where church gathers on Sabbath morning. Church happens on Sunday. Church happens on Monday. It happens on Tuesday, and it ought to happen with you included, which means we need to live in community outside of just the 12 o'clock hour on Sabbath morning. Coming by, getting your worship on, getting your word, and walking out, that is not belonging to a church. Can I just be real with you? It was not meant to be this way. The believer in Jesus comes and grows as we, as we, as iron sharpens iron, as we come together and challenge one another and nurture one another and inspire one another. That is God's design for church. It is for us to experience this, to comprehend this with all of the saints. And, I, and, and I'll plug this in right now shamelessly. We, we have our life groups about to launch in February, which is precisely what we intend to do. This is a space for us. To, con- to connect as a community and be able to learn about Jesus together on your way out, you're going to be given a little card as an invitation for you to join a life group because that's exactly what we want to do in this church. Be able to experience the love of God with the saints. But, but he says, I want you to be rooted and grounded in agape. David, I want you to do this with all the saints But notice the purpose for which God wants us to be rooted and grounded in love. This is is the kind of endeavor he wants us to get into, to engage in as we come together, as we wrestle and try to comprehend the love of God. This this, This rocked my socks. Notice what he says. That you may comprehend. Let's go back. Let's go back. That you may comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the. Honestly, I've been wrestling all week trying to explain this thing for you. Paul is asking God that he may lead us to a place where we may try to measure the love of God, the dimensions of God, of the love of God. So he says, I want you to wrestle with how wide, how broad the love of God is. I want you to, as a church, start wrestling with this idea. I want you to wrestle with how wide it actually is. So, so, so there I am. I'm, I'm saying, okay, God, I, I want you to work with me. Show me how wide your love is. And, and, and I began to push God. Have you ever pushed God before? Have you ever pushed God before? I began to push God this week saying, okay, God, maybe this is how wide you go. Maybe you exclude the people on this side. You exclude the, the, the people who look this way or vote this way. So, and, and as I'm looking at scriptures, God says, no, I don't exclude those people. My love is wider than that. So then I, 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 I look at where God has taken me, and, 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 and he says, no, you think this is, this is where you would put your boundary, but let me tell you something. My love is even wider and broader than that. And the more I push, the more sinful the person I could come up with, I would push it. Okay, God, certainly you can stop right here. And God would say, nope, you got to push it even further. You got to push it even further. The love of God has no limits in its breath. And let me tell you how I can guarantee that. Because it encompasses even me. Yo, if I fit into this thing, anyone can fit into this thing. If if it was able to go wide enough for me to get in, you're good. You see, the, the, the wider we get, the wider it gets. So, so, so Paul's saying, I, I'm praying that you may be rooted and grounded, that you may, as a church, experience the love of God and that you can try to measure. Come on, come on, come on. Try to measure this thing. Try to see how wide it goes. Try to, come on, and, 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 and I want to submit this to you. As, as, as humans, we have been pushing the boundaries all of our lives. 
We've been pushing, 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 yet we have not been able to outrun and outgrow the love of God. So he says, oh, I, I want you to check out and measure the breadth, but I also want you to look at the length. How long is the love of God? So I was like, okay, God, is it, I, it seems like it's the same thing, right? It all has to do with distance. And then God said, no, 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 I, I'm not talking about distance here. Manny, I'm talking about time. How long is my love? When did it start, David? So, so I started saying, okay, well, I'm 35 and a half. Okay, so maybe at conception. No. He said, uh, Manny, I loved you before you were a twinkle in your parents' eyes. And guess what, Manny? I loved you before your parents even existed. I loved you before their parents even existed. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah tells me, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. That, that, that means that his love for me supersedes time. It goes even before creation. It goes before the, 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 the planet earth was even, was even conceived. It was before it was created. The love of God for me not, not in a corporate sense, but the love of God for me in a personal sense and for you in a personal sense has been alive and has been burning even before the cosmos were created. It has had no beginning. And if it's had no beginning, I got some great news for you. It will have no end. If he loves you today, then that's evidence that he's going to love you tomorrow. So, so he said, okay, try to measure the, 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 how wide it is. Well, the wider I get, the wider it gets. Okay, try to measure its length. It has no beginning and it has no end. And then, and then he says, okay, now try to measure how high it goes. How high does it go? How high does the love of God go? I was prayer walking yesterday. I was asking, okay, God, how high? I know you're on a throne somewhere, but how high? He, he, and this, this, is, this is the impression that I got. Manny, I'm higher than your trials. Let's start there. I'm higher than your problems. I'm higher than your sicknesses. I'm higher than your depression. I'm higher than your burnout. I'm higher than your pride. I'm higher than your brokenness. I'm higher than the problems that are coming your way. I'm higher than that. But that's easy. I'm higher than your achievements, Manny. I'm higher than your abilities. I'm higher than your talents. I'm higher than the glories that you may receive here on earth. I'm higher than your education. I'm higher than, your, than, than everything you have been able to accumulate in this earth. I am higher and will forever be higher than that. So, so Paul's saying, I want you to, to check out how wide it is. You, you can't contain that. How long has it been? You can't measure that. It has always existed. How high does it go? Higher than your problems, higher than your good days and your bad days. It's higher than that. Oh, but where he got me, where he got me good, was when we, he, he led me to ask how deep it goes. Oh, that's where he got me. That's where he got me. That's where he, he just completely broke my heart right here. Because I started looking downward. And I started asking, okay, God, how deep does it go? Well, I was born in a manger. I, I left heaven and I came down to the depths of this little manger in Bethlehem. I came down that deep. But that was my highest point here on earth. Because I went deeper yet. I became not just one of you, but I became the lowliest of you. I became one of your servants, and I washed your feet while I was here on earth. I was accused, wrongly accused for, for crimes I never committed. You committed them. And I was, I was convicted and tried on a cross, and taken to a cross and crucified. And that's where I, I hit my rock bottom, Jesus said. That is how deep I'm going to go right there at the cross. 
So, and I, I wasn't grasping it. I wasn't grasping it. I wasn't grasping it. And, and as I'm wrestling with God and I'm talking to God, God, please show me. Give me clarity. What does that mean? Because I know what it, hit, what it means to hit rock bottom as a person. I know what it means to hit rock bottom as a father and as a husband and as a pastor. I know what my rock bottom is. I've been there and it's painful and it's dark. I know what my rock bottom is. Tell me, God, how deep did you go? And with clarity, this is what God responded. Manny, when I was on the cross, I looked up and saw you hit rock bottom. When I was on the cross, I had to look up to appreciate you at your lowest point. Because I had gone that much deeper than even the lowest point in your life. What? God, so you're telling me that in the deepest, darkest moments of my life, when I got to depths and darknesses that I never imagined could be redeemable, you on the cross went lower than that? He said, that is the gospel. That's the gospel. God has to look up to see your lowest point. God has to look up to witness you hit rock bottom. The darkest, deepest secret of your life. Jesus has to look up from the cross and see you make it. That's how deep the love of God is. Hallelujah. It's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. You can't explain this stuff away. You, you, you can't quantify it. You can't. How do you? We are doing a disservice today right now because it's that big. And yet, Paul says, hey, I am praying that you may be rooted and grounded in love. That you may experience with the saints you can try to get it. Come on, try to come together and measure how wide it gets. You're not going to be able to try to get how long it gets. You're never going to be able to grasp that. How high, you'll never get it. How deep, you'll never get it. You're never going to be able to explain it away. But you can experience it. Watch how he ends. That you may have the strength to comprehend with all the saints, the breadth and the, de- the length and the height and the depth. Verse 19 and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. That you can know. These are two different words in the Greek. The first know has to do with experience. That you may experience the love of God that surpasses any intellectual understanding. This kind of love can only be experienced. Family, how many of us want to root ourselves in this kind of love this year? I mean, wouldn't our life be so different wouldn't we be able to withstand the greatest of storms and, and the greatest of, te- of temptations and remain just stable and firm with this kind of love at our roots? Wouldn't we be able to produce different type of fruit? Wouldn't we be more humble and less proud in our home and, and more, more faithful in, in our work? We would display more integrity. Why? Because the love of Christ is actually nurturing our lives. And now the fruits come out so naturally because our roots are in Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want this to be me this year. This year and for the rest of my lives. And you know what? I may not be able to tell you I'm there, but she will. And they will. The closest ones to me will be able to see, man, something happened to dad. Something happened to him. I'm still kind of like, you know, not, not realize. I'm just trying to follow Jesus. But the people around me, the leaders, those I differ with, those that rub me the wrong way, will be able to say, man, something happened to that guy. And none of that credit will go to me. It will go to Jesus and his love. How many of us want that kind of love today? Will you stand? If you want to receive that today, will you stand right now? Will you stand and say, Lord, I want this love. 
I want to root my, 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 my life in this love. I want to ground my life in this love. I want, I want this year to be my year, the year where I am stable and I am producing the type of fruit that comes from being with you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to sing in just a moment. The worship team is going to come. We're going to sing how he loves us. I think it's so appropriate that we would do this. But I don't want to leave this this stage right now without making this invitation. There may be someone in this audience today, someone, whether watching online right now, you can hit us up right there on our comment section on Facebook, or you can come up right now. If you believe that this is the year that God is calling you to give your life to Jesus. This is, this is one of those things that we do as a church that perhaps requires for us to kind of take a deep breath and, and with courage just make our way forward. But I just want to extend this invitation to someone who today realized, I want, to, I want my life to be established. I want it to be rooted. I want it to be grounded in the love of God. And I want to do this publicly this year by saying, Jesus, my life belongs to you. Is there anyone right now? We're not going to take much time. I just want to give you the opportunity to come up. Come up. Or perhaps you were like the Ephesians in chapter 2 of, of, of Revelation who uh, had fallen away from their first love. Maybe you've walked away from the Lord and you feel God is bringing me back home and this is a year when I become rebat- when I get rebaptized and give my life to Jesus again. If this is you, I'm giving you this opportunity right now. I believe God has led us to this moment today. Is there anyone who just wants to say, this is me. I am giving my life to Jesus for the first time or I'm doing it for the second time. Is this any, if there anyone in this place who just wants to say, this is me this year. This is me this year. I don't want to extend this very long. Just give you the opportunity to come up and say, this is me, my friend. God bless you. God bless you. Is there anyone else? I want to invite the elders to join me up here for a moment. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Is that you, brother? God bless you, man. God bless you. Can we hear it together? Come on. Can we, can we say amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God has amazing plans for your life this year. And there will be trials. There will be difficulties. But you are choosing right now to root your life in Jesus, to ground your life with Jesus. And no one will be able to take you down because you got Jesus on your side. Is there anyone else who just wants to say, I want to give my life to Jesus this year. I want to do it. And, and yes, it's kind of, kind of awkward to walk in front of 200 people, but I'm doing this for Jesus Christ. I believe he is calling me. I believe, amen, hallelujah. I believe he is calling me and I'm going to obey his calling. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? I'm going to close this right now, but I want to give you an opportunity. I've been praying this week. I've been praying for faces. I've been praying for names. And I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to some of you, calling you, calling you to, 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 to give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Is there anyone else? I want to invite the worship team to come up. If you're back here, I want to invite you to come up right now. We're going to sing together. As they're settling in, that gives us about 30 more seconds for us to extend this. Is there anyone else who right now wants to say, wants to say, this is my year. This is my grandmother, by the way, who is up here. Hallelujah, abuelita. Dios te bendiga. Grandma came up to the appeal as well. See, if grandma can come up with a walker, you can make your way up here as well, okay? Is there anyone else who just wants to say, Lord, this is the year I want to give my life to you? This is the year I want to give my life to you. Is there anyone else, anyone else, anyone else? I just want to give you a few more seconds. The rest of you, I hope you're praying. I hope you're praying. I hope you're praying. I hope you're praying. Is there anyone else? This is the best possible thing that can happen in your life. It's not going to take away problems, but it will get you through your problems. Amen? It's not going to take away temptation, but it will give you the strength to withstand those temptations. It's not going to bring everything in order, but it will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. The love of God can only be experienced, and this is the year you get to do it. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? I'm going to have a word of prayer. Can we, can we bring them together real quick? Let's pray together real, real quick. If you, as a, as a sign of affirmation, just want to st- extend your hand right now, just point it in this direction. And if you feel that God is speaking to you right now during this prayer, make your way up. We'll talk to you. We'll pray for you. And we will, we will start this journey together. We are being rooted and grounded in the love of 
Christ and Jesus Christ. Father, thank you so much. We cannot quantify, we cannot explain this thing away. But I believe, God, I believe you leaned in today, today, right now in this place. You leaned in and you caressed some of our faces. You kissed some of our foreheads. You came in, God, with our morning breath, with our nappy hair. You came in to show us how much you loved us, God. And Lord, I want to thank you so much for these lives, these stories that have come up, who are simply saying this year, this year I am rooting and grounding my life in Jesus and his love. Lord, we can't comprehend how wide you go, how long you go, how high you go, or how deep you go, but today we have experienced it. And from this moment on, Lord, we move forward asking you to live in our hearts, to move in, God, and do in us the work that you wish. We love you, God, but first and foremost, we're grateful because of how you love us. Thank you, Jesus. Can we say his name together? Jesus. One more time. Jesus. Jesus. It's all about you. We're grateful for this love. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's hear it loud. Amen. 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 Amen.